I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today we're going to be looking at two high-def action cameras for recording FPV video. Now one of them is what many people would argue to be the best uh, high-def action camera, the GoPro Session 5. The GoPro Session 5 comes in at around $300, which also makes it one of the most expensive action cameras on the market, uh, but I think a lot of people would argue that it's worth it. The other camera we're going to be looking at is the Runcam 2. Now this one comes in at about $80. So at, with such a big price difference, can the quality of the video even begin to hold up? Well, I'm going to let you decide for yourself. We'll take some close looks at the video from both of them and see how they stack up. Now I want you guys to form your own opinions without being biased by knowing beforehand which camera is which. So I'm going to start and I, I want you to just watch about two minutes of flight footage to one pack and I haven't labeled the cameras, I'm just showing you camera one and camera two, and I want you to kind of form your own opinions, get your own impressions of what you like and don't like about each of them. Watch it as many times as you want, and when you're ready to go on, I'll break down some of the things I notice. Well, I hope you've watched that as many times as you feel like you needed to to form an opinion. I uh, hope you enjoyed the flying as well. And let's take a closer look now at some of the characteristics that I noticed about these two different cameras. Now, normally if I were to show you footage from a run cam and a GoPro side by side, you could easily tell which was which because the run cam would have a much narrower field of view. GoPros are known for their wide field of view. This is especially true if you're using super view mode. Super view gives a really ultra wide field of view, but there is some vertical stretching or squishing of the image. And personally, I don't like it, although many FPV pilots do like it. What you're seeing here from the GoPro is recorded in wide mode, which is the second widest field of view the GoPro supports. Uh, and I, I like it because it has a little bit less distortion. And if we go back and forth between these frames, one of the things we can see is that there is actually not very much difference between the two cameras. I'm still not telling you which is which, by the way. There's not very much difference between the two cameras. And this is a selling point that, that RunCam has announced about the RunCam 2. It has a wider field of view, and uh, I'm sure the intent there, although it's not explicit, is to give a more GoPro-like look to FPV footage. The next thing I want to take a look at with you is the dynamic range and contrast of the image. And we can see here that camera one has a much more contrasty photo. 
the highlights are a little bit closer to being blown out. If you look at the grass in the lower right, the bright spots are pretty bright. Whereas if you look at camera number two, you can see it has a, a less contrasty image and it has better dynamic range. If you look at the shadows under the trees, you can see that camera number two has more detail in the shadows, whereas camera number one has basically shadows that are, the, the details are getting lost in the shadows. The next thing we're going to look at is uh, what may be the most obvious difference between these two cameras, and that is the color rendition or the color balance. Uh, camera number one has a really sort of hyper-saturated blue in the sky, and overall it has, I guess, what you would call a cooler color balance. Whereas camera two has, uh, you could call it, I guess, a, a redder color balance, and also there's less saturation, certainly in the sky. I think camera number one is playing with the saturation in addition to just the color balance. But uh, between the two, I feel like camera number two has a more natural looking and more pleasant picture. The next thing I want to look at is the sort of level of resolution or detail that the cameras seem to have. Both of these cameras record at 1080p 60, uh, but a camera that puts out a 1080p video doesn't necessarily, that doesn't speak to how much actual resolution the image will have. And especially if there's a low bit rate in the image, you can often end up with very sort of macro blocked anyway. Uh, so not all 1080p 60 is equal. Here we are looking at camera number one, and I picked a frame from, a t this is when I was doing a power loop over a tree. And I picked this frame because the copter is moving very rapidly on the pitch axis, and so I felt like it would, any sort of blurring or macro blocking from, from inadequate bitrate would come out here. It's a little hard to say for sure because camera number one has a brighter exposure, and so I think we might be losing some details in the highlights of camera number one. But camera number two, to me, looks like it has more fine detail in the grass here uh, than camera number one. I'll, I'll show you camera number one again. Here's camera number two and camera number one. Well, it's time for me to reveal which camera is which. If you haven't figured it out already, the test I'm about to show you will definitely give it away. Camera number one is the Runcam 2. That's the one with the slightly wider field of view the very blue saturated sky, the slightly bluer color temperature, a little bit less detail in, uh, in the shadows and in the grass uh, during fast motion, and a uh, slightly more contrasty image. To get all that, the GoPro is the other one, the opposite of all those things. The test that would definitely give it away if you hadn't figured it out already is the audio quality. Let me play you the audio that you've been hearing up till now. Oh, that's, that's pretty good, actually. That's not so bad. Well, that is the audio from the GoPro Session 5. Here's what the audio sounds like from the Runcam 2. And that is going to bring us to the end of this comparison. I don't think the results will shock anybody that the GoPro had, well, I think the GoPro pretty clearly had the better image. It had a better dynamic range, a better exposure, a more pleasant color temperature, and it didn't have that weird sort of hypersaturated sky. That, that's been true all the way back to the Mobius. I remember my Mobius looked that way. I don't know what the relationship is between the run cam and the Mobius, but there you go. I will say if you're looking at these and you think the GoPro looked really sort of underexposed and muddy and with really bad shadow detail. I have a pretty decent Dell monitor and some cheapo Asus monitors that I've looked at this video on and the Asus monitors, the GoPro kind of looked worse. It looked really underexposed. Uh, so it may be the case that you're looking at it on a terrible monitor. Uh, enough said about that. All that being said, I feel like the Runcam 2 put in a decent showing. I've seen some quote-unquote action cameras that recorded at like 12 or 17 megabits per second, uh, and it, they were just absolute garbage for FPV. This camera can record 1080p 60 at 30 megabits per second, which I think gives a pretty decent result. And many of the things I complained about, like the color saturation, the exposure, and the white balance, can be tweaked in the phone app, which may be a trade-off you're willing to make if you want to save $230 over the price of a Session 5. 
Well, there you go. There's my head-to-head between the Run Cam 2 and the GoPro Session 5. Hope you liked it. Hope you learned something. Happy flying.